It's my pleasure to invite Mr Greg Whitby, Executive Director of um, Parramatta, to address us. Thank you. Welcome to our annual Education Mass. This Eucharistic celebration is the highlight of our school year. We are gathered around our chief teacher, Bishop Anthony, and the priests of the diocese to, particip to, to participate in the core expression of our shared faith. A special welcome to our new teachers whom I spent some time with today with our bishop and also with our new principals, who I'm pleased to say are not new to our system. I would also join with the Bishop in extending a warm, warm welcome to our colleague, Dr. Brian Croke, Executive Director of Catholic Education New South Commission New South Wales, Mr. John Kitney, the Director of Corporate Services for the New South Wales Catholic Education Commission, and Ms. Rose Mrs. Rosalie Knott, uh, Assistant Director. Mr. Kevin Conley, MP for Riverston, you are very, very welcome, and welcome particularly as a former colleague. Mr. Paul Worthington, Executive Director, Confraternity of Christian Doctrine. Mr. Otto Helfling, colleagues, uh, who is the Executive Director of Catholic Care Services and a colleague in our work here in the diocese. We have apologies from Mr. Dominic Perrottet, the MP, MP for Castle Hill, our gracious parish priest here, Father Peter, the vicars general uh, and the priests of the diocese, along with their teachers, support staff, principals and assistant principals, and my colleagues from the Catholic Education Office. At the risk of embarrassing one of our vicar generals, I would just like to tell you a little story because I was talking to our young teachers today and we were talking about the moment of grace or moments of grace that you experience in this wonderful profession of ours. And I was with this certain vicar general at the renaming ceremony of one of our schools. And during Father's uh, talk to the school community, he did something extremely daring. He decided to ask the, all the little boys and girls sitting in front of him a question. Now, those of us in the teaching profession understand the potential when you do those sorts of things. But the point our, um, this unnamed Vicar General was going to make was, in a renaming ceremony, it would be good to start with the young boys and girls because they had names. I could see the logic immediately. So we asked the question, would somebody like to tell me your name? All hands went up. The selection process was made. A lovely little seven-year-old boy. Yes, and what's your name? Microphone thrust under their mouth. Jack. Jack, how did your mum and dad come to give you your name? They couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> At that stage, I thought, Father, quit while you're ahead. Undaunted, however, we went off to the other side of the room, this time the choice, a lovely little six-year-old young lady, microphone under the, the um, chin, and yes, what's your name? Kestra. And why did your mum and dad name you Kestra? They love Star Wars. <laughs> At this time, the Vicar General decided retreat and went and asked the principal, whose name was Michael, and we went on from there. As a wonderful opportunity, <laughs> oh, you could give a, give a clap for our Vicar General. It's a wonderful experience, a moment of grace in our schools and in the work we do. While our new school leaders are about to be commissioned, the world will be watching and waiting to see who becomes the next leader of the Catholic Church. Much has been written and said about the papacy of Pope Benedict XVI in the recent weeks. But we can remember him as someone who reflect, reflected deeply on the scriptures. 
In this local year of the grace, when we're encouraged to listen more intently to God's word, we can thank Pope Benedict for bringing the word to the people of God. As our bishop has said, we have much to celebrate and we go forward this year in a degree of confidence. 2012 was another very eventful year for all of us working in Catholic education. And one of many highlights was the Bishop of Archbishop John Louis Bruges. Archbishop came and spoke not only to Catholic education here in Parramatta, but to other dioceses. And he spoke about the challenges all Catholic schools face in an increasingly secular and demanding world. But he reminded us that teaching remains the most beautiful job in the world. With that in our mind, let us look ahead. A few years ago, Harvard professor of education, Richard Elmore, wrote that teaching was not rocket science. In fact, he said, it was much more complex. Teaching is complex, but is also at the same time one of the most re rewarding vocations that you can ever seek to hope to enter. In this year of grace, our chief teacher, Bishop Anthony, reminds us that every God-given opportunity is a grace and it includes our work. And so this year, our system focus is directly on the work we do. More specifically, the work of teachers and what they do, and we call that teaching. As I've said to our system leaders when we gathered in January at the start of the year, it's all about good teaching. Catholic schools are essentially and deeply religious places. Their setting is religious, their culture is religious, and their reason for being is religious. They differ from other religious organisations in that their particular focus is on learning and teaching. This means that if a school is to be a good Catholic school, it must, first of all, be a very good school and a place of effective teaching and of learning. We have taken this year the initiative to support that teaching by putting faces on the data, by knowing deeply every individual in our schools, in every class, in any learning space. And we know from decades of research that good teachers make a positive impact on student learning outcomes. So for every student in our school to improve their learning, we need every teacher in our school to improve their practice. This is, ladies and gentlemen, our collective responsibility as a system, as teachers and as leaders. This year we continue our emphasis on learning by inquiring, inquiring who are our learners and how we can personalise learning inquiring into what our teachers know and need to know, inquiring into the data and the evidence of how we can build and continue to grow our capacity. As we build on what we know and become more effective in what we do, we can share this part of the continuous improvement cycle. So our collective mantra for 2013 is inquire, respond and share. Too often our work is informed by narrow measures and limited evidence. We sometimes forget that behind the data and the evidence and the numbers are young people's lives. When you look at your students, what do you see? More importantly, who do you see? Do you see someone who can't or won't learn? Or do you see the face of Jesus? As Jesus said, that you do to the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you do to me. If one of our students in one of our schools fails, then we all fail. Just as we are one body in Christ, we are also a community of Catholic educators. We have a moral imperative to ensure that every student leaves our system with a high level of literacy, religious literacy and numeracy and we want our students to be compassionate, creative and critical thinkers. We want them to value their Catholic faith and continue to enrich their religious and faith development through liturgical and sacramental practice. 
Our students are members of today's world and they are part of a local school culture and a global community. They will need to internalise particular values such as compassion, tolerance and a commitment to social justice, which will be the defining elements not only of their civic responsibility but as an outcome of their Catholic schooling. Teaching is an act of grace and to quote from the Catholic schools on the threshold of the third millennium, teachers write on the very spirits of the human beings. Every day teachers touch the lives of students in the most profound ways. Sometimes we're reminded this as I told you in the story of our nameless Vicar General. The late Pope John Paul II urged Catholic teachers to approach their work with a great sense of adventure, a point I tried to make to our beginning teachers today and I'd like to make again. As new teachers, this is an exciting adventure upon which you're embarking. No wonder educational writers and academic and the academic um, Andy Hargrove says that teaching is not a place for the shrinking violets. He's correct, it's for people with courage, conviction and commitment. People who are lifelong learners and people just like you. I wish you well in the work that you do on behalf of the Church of Parramatta.